Nationwide climate change protests are expected to kick off today. can hear the protesters around me and we've seen many arrests. Of the evidence is pretty clear. We're on a pathway to more extremes. There does really seem to be a new burst of uh, awareness and action, especially, especially from young people. The nature of the seafloor communities up on the Great Barrier Reef is going to change fundamentally. We're really running out of time, I think, at present to really start to act and rapidly reduce emissions. Food security is going to be a major issue. There are a lot more days when fire can spread. What we're trying to do is have a look at the natural climate variability that's gone over in the past couple of centuries. So what's the natural baseline and that's in the ocean being the biggest absorber of heat that we have for moderating the temperature of the planet. So what's the trajectory that that's been on? Well, as, as our temperatures are rising we are getting much more widespread dryness across the landscape which means that um, there are a lot more days when fire can spread and when it does um, the areas that would normally contain fires um, because they were moist gullies or particular uh, generally less flammable forest types these areas are now being burnt through. I think it's undeniable that the return rate so the frequency of things like coral bleaching events is getting higher and their intensity seems to be growing as well. So whereas coral bleaching first emerged as a phenomenon back in the 80s, it was something um, that was a large scale event, but there were very few and far between. Now we're looking at return rates of every five or six years. So in addition to reducing emissions, I think it's essential that we enter a new era of global cooperation, more than we've cooperated in the past, because otherwise, the humanitarian impacts later this century are going to be humanitarian crises and that will be unnecessary. It will only be because we fail to work together to um, meet the challenges that climate change will pose. In order to, to feed the 9 billion people that are projected to inhabit this planet by 2050, um, there's going to be a need to produce 50 to 70 percent more food with finite resources. People are starting to under, uh, understand what an emergency climate change is. It's not just one of those issues that uh, you have to think about and maybe sometime in the future we, we ought to get sorted. It's an emergency right now. Well, I think this climate change action that people are taking to the streets to, to vocalise is, is really reflecting people's frustration, but also that they themselves are starting to observe changes that are, that are out of the norm. You know, seeing uh, what these kids are doing is actually one of the things that has brought me the most hope in recent times, I think. Well, I think it's remarkable that so many young people are getting behind the cause. Um, I think, um, you know, I think the future is probably in good hands and I mean I feel enthused by seeing young people that are willing to um, to put their, their hands up and say you know they, they want to see change. A lot of people um, who are going to feel most keenly the effects of climate change are people who don't even exist yet. And one of the encouraging things is the young people have started this movement in the last year but now it's multi-generational. You're seeing 80 year olds and joining them in the Extinction Rebellion protests and climate change protests around the world. So that's very encouraging. People can see what's coming and they're angry that not more is being done to address it. Yeah.